Welcome to our latest video series for the Oozinest YouTube channel. I am Ryan and this series is called CNC Basics. This first video is going to simplify the difference between conventional and client milling and highlight when to choose one over the other. In a situation with the M mill rotating clockwise, conventional milling, also sometimes referred to as up milling, is when you are milling against the rotation of the end mill. Cutting a chip is resisting the end mill in the opposite direction to the feed. With the end mill also rotating clockwise, in contrast, climb milling, also sometimes referred to as down milling, is when you are milling with the rotation of the end mill. Cutting a chip is pulling the end mill in the same direction to the feed. How do the two directions affect tool life? When conventional milling, chips are being carried upward of the cut, resulting in chip recutting, harder chip evacuation and extra heat buildup. These three factors reduce tool life and require more power from the spindle. The cut direction affects how the chips are cut. In conventional milling, the chip is cut starting at zero whip, building up to the maximum whip. Climb milling is the opposite. At the start of each cut, it is cutting a maximum whip going down to zero whip. In conventional milling, at the point where the end mill starts each chip, it will rub rather than cut until enough pressure has built up for it to engage and begin the chip, again reducing tool life. Conventional milling can reduce the tool life up to 50%. How do the two directions affect end mill deflection? Conventional and client milling have different effects on end mill deflection. Conventional milling puts greater force on the end mill, so therefore a larger deflection. But because the way the chips are cut, the deflection tends to be parallel to the direction of the feed. So it has minimal effect on part geometry and will provide a smoother wall finish. Climb milling deflection is smaller than the conventional. But because of the way the chips are cut, it's perpendicular to direction of cut, so it can affect part geometry. From the previous points on deflection, we can determine it is normally best to rough cut using climb milling. The deflection on the end mill is smaller, so you can go quicker or use greater pass steps. This is a great tip to remember when selecting your tool paths. Now, when deciding to use the machine direction to use on the finishing pass, this will depend if the end mill deflection is going to be troublesome. For example, if using a 1 over 32 inch end mill, it has the potential to have significant deflection. Therefore, a conventional finishing pass would be most suitable as the deflection would be parallel to the feed direction so it will give a nice surface finish and better geometry. I have a final few points I'd like to mention to keep in mind when selecting your tool paths. In conventional milling, the end mill is taking the largest cut, meaning the largest falls when losing contact with the material, thus making an upwards false. This increased upwards false means more fault has to be put into workpiece clamping. Climb milling works the opposite. The force is downwards, which helps to stabilise the part being cut. When slotting, such as a profile cut, the end mill will be conventional cutting 50% of the time and climb cutting the other 50%. So which direction you choose in your CAM program is not massively important. But a decision would need to be made on the machining direction if you decide to do a separate finishing pass. The final point to consider is that climb milling can increase the chip load due to backlash. If the climb force is strong enough, climb milling can pull the machine into the material. So if a machine has no anti-backlash mechanism, the amount of backlash in the machine should be added to the chip load. We hope you've enjoyed this first video in our CNC Basics series. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.